So if we had more time, you could share with other people. But just a couple of people, um, give us an example. Where did you want to be in that picture? And why did you want to be in that place? Anybody want to share? Yes? Okay, so you don't want to be beside him, you just want to be him. And why do you want to be him? Because in the reality of what about transpired at my dad's meeting all that kind of stuff wouldn't really be. So you don't think as the little boy that, that you would be worried or afraid in that moment? I, I'm sure he's worried, but the more wider picture would have been I don't think he's aware of it. Okay. Anybody else? Where did you want to be? I'm in the front taking the picture because I definitely don't want to go off to war. Okay. <laughs> so you want the job as the photographer. Yeah, it's a brilliant photographer. But maybe um, you could, maybe as a really good photographer, you might be sent. <laughs> so you might not be spared just because you're the photographer. Okay. One more person. Where would you like to be and why? Yes. Person on the bus behind all of this because I'd shelter myself and protect uh, all the sadness that I know is going to take place and watch it from an observational point of view as a person as opposed to somebody actually within the context of the tragedy about to happen. Okay, so one more thing I want you to think about um, is who do you want, who would you like to talk to in that picture? So if I said you can speak to one person, who would you like to talk to? Who would you like, and when I say talk to, it might not just be question. Maybe you'd like to tell them something. Maybe you'd like to help them with something at this point. So who would you like to talk to in the picture? And what would you like to say to them? And just share that with a partner now. Who would you like to talk to and what would you want to say to them? going to do is tell the story of this picture, okay? And really, and people talked about stories and stories and language, and so every single person in this picture has a story. Even the guy at the very, very back who's kind of dimly lit and we can't barely see his face or um, one of the women walking behind here, every single person in this picture has a story. So just as a group, um, I want you to try to retell or tell the story of this picture, but I want you to tell it in role. So instead of, you know, this is a picture probably taken, um, what year do you think this might have been taken? 39, okay. So instead of, you know, telling it that way, the way that the photographer might have told it, I want you to be someone in the picture. This picture belongs to you. How do you tell the story of this picture? And you don't have to tell us who you are, but if you would just try for a couple of minutes to go around the circle, so you might start and say, you know, this, I remember this picture. Um, I had gone down to see the parade that day. I was there when they captured it. I saw that little boy reach out to his, so maybe I'm telling it from the point of view of one of those women. Or maybe I'm one of the soldiers. I remember that day. I remember being in that parade. We had been marching through the streets. People, you know. So just pick a point of view or a perspective and just go around the circle. If you just have one detail to add, that's fine. Just for a few moments, quickly. So. Um, I just want to ask you, what changed when you went into role and started to tell the story? How did it change at that point? How did the story change? How did your response change? Yes? It became a little bit more emotionally connected. Right, right. And it's a very emotional photograph, isn't it? So um, I, I've used this with a lot of kids. and. Even though they don't know that time period, you know, there's lots of things that they bring to that story from their own story. Um, so yeah, it be you become more emotional. Is there anything else that changed when you went into role to tell the story? Yes? Right. 
Right, right. Very nice. Yeah, much more, more vivid that way. Um, any, anybody else? Anything else change? Yes? More real? I, I think the fact that the personal to the universal, it doesn't matter what time era the picture is in. Absolutely. I think having students engage in this mm -hmm. will help them focus on that universality piece that is right. often such a hard connect. Absolutely. And, and Larry's going to talk about that with other sources. Um, but I just thought to end my, I, got, I know I had a two minute warning, but if you could share, if anybody wanted to volunteer to go back to the I am a tree. So if you just want to stand up and tell us who you were when you were telling the story. So I am that woman and um, I remember, okay? So just who you are and one thing you remember. Just to kind of, you know, bookend with the I am a tree. So if anybody would like to stand in roll and just tell us who you were and what you remember about that moment when that picture was taken. I'm the woman standing behind uh, the mother. Uh, I'm alone and I have just said goodbye to my husband without telling him that I'm carrying his child. Anybody else want to share who they were? <laughs> There's no winners. Did you want to share? Go ahead. No? Anybody? Uh, one more? Did you want to share over here? Um, what's your name? Did you want to share? No? No? Anybody else? Okay. That's fine. But um, you, so you could go back to the I am and the kids could write it as well. So you've had that opportunity to step inside the picture, in the role, and now they could go away and write you know, a very short monologue, a journal entry. I remember that night when, my, when I got home, I spoke to my son, here's what we talked about, or as the boy. Or we could transport it in time and we could have the little boy now grown up or now he's a, an older man and he is telling the story to the next generation. I remember the day that picture was taken, my father was going, my mother was, and, and all the details from that perspective. So one of the exciting things I think about working in drama is working with those multiple perspectives. And you would never leave a student to be the mom for too long because you don't want her to get too connected to that, but to have a moment to experience what she might have been experiencing. And if you Google the picture, it's a very famous picture. It's on the cover of um, a recent book of Canadian photographs. It was taken in New Westminster, British Columbia. The little boy's name is Whitey. That was, his, that was his nickname, Whitey. And the day after the picture was taken, it was on the front page of the paper. And Whitey became an instant hero. Or, or you know, he sort of became um, an emblem or a spokesperson for war bonds. They used that photograph a lot during the war. And, um, and then the other thing we've had kids do is, you know, what, what is the, the newspaper title of the picture? Somebody wrote on the back a message. What's the message on the back? So there's lots and lots of different possibilities for further exploring it. Two minute warning, oh, done. Two minute warning. Two minute warning. Okay, I stand between you and lunch now. Thank you, Debbie. And when I listen to Debbie, I learn something new every time. The message is with drama, just to give, encapsulate it. In drama, you can be anybody at any place at any time. We've got this moment. What happened that morning? What's going to happen that night? Five years, 10 years, you get to choose. And you can have the kids create that still image to show the vision of this father's life, this child's life, whatever. And you can use other dynamics. We heard about writing and role today. And Debbie actually found some letters. Just tell them about the Globe letters. So the, it's inside the book in that, that jam-packed Mother What Was War chapter. But uh, a couple of years ago, they printed in the Globe around Remembrance Day a series of letters, Dear Sweetheart. Did anybody remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have two of those um, that I've used with a lot of students inside there to also begin to understand the story and when did he leave and what's it like for the people left behind and what is she thinking. and 
how would you respond to those letters and creating the moment the letter was written and you know kids love to do that they're pretending that they're writing and somebody <laughs> else's dear sweetheart you know and they showed him in the moment with his buddies writing the letter and but that you can get all those letters also online from the it's still up there. At because the often kids reveal themselves in their writing and role if they didn't choose to speak out. Uh, just, uh, I have a whole collection of books connected to the theme. The one that we elaborated, a beautiful, beautiful picture book called The Enemy by David Kelly, and it's just two men in a hole. They're each enemies. Uh, who's the enemy really? And what happens? Who's going to come out of the hole first? So we describe an extended <laughs> drama unit with this particular picture book, and my colleague and friend Eric Walters, wounded. Uh, his novel that my students are going to read is appropriate, and my other students did a drama lesson on, but it's about a man who comes back from the Afghan war, war in Afghanistan, and uh, how he has to cope, how the family can't cope, how he can't cope. So literature is always our sources here, and we have a bibliography there. Thanks for doing the drama part. Just to finish our today, thank you for all the people, Mary and team from Pembroke Publishers. One tiny bit of business then. Oh, thanks to all our presenters. Thanks to our presenters. Uh, one last piece of business. There is a free book, and when Mary told me she was giving this book, this book I used in my thesis, like my Bible, Better Than Life. Daniel Panek wrote this book a number of years ago, about a decade ago. It was a number one bestseller in life, and I think it connects to some of those things. It's about He talks about the Holy Trinity, the parent, the child, and the book, and the parents do everything um, that they can to bring literacy. They read it aloud, they took them to the library, etc., and then he goes to school, and that love of reading, that joy of reading has dissipated because what the kinds of, remember those 10 questions that we met? Those t because of the 10 comprehension questions and the teacher wouldn't allow him to think differently to get onto the computer and Google with your friends, to sit alongside your friends and do all those things and this has been on, it was on my classroom wall, the right to not read. He talks about the reader's rights. The right to not read. The right to skip pages. The right to not finish a book. The right to reread. The right to read anything. The right to escape. The right to, um, I need my glasses, to be, uh, be um, anywhere, the right to browse, to write to read anywhere, the right to browse, the right to read out loud, and the right not to defend your taste. I love this book. It's a gift for you if you fill in this survey. <laughs> Sometime in the next half hour, give uh, the survey to Candice, but go get your lunch and thanks today for today. Thank you.